Okay, guys, Ace is Tough is Tough. This uh, computer case was dropped from a pickup truck onto this side, the glass side. Here's the piece of glass. The glass did not break. Um, it had these, you know, they look strange, but they're on the outside of the glass. But these things kept the glass from breaking on this case. A lot of stuff happened since the beginning of the year, a lot of stuff for everybody, I think. Other thing is, this computer was set outside on the porch and approximately two inches of rain. It wasn't raining directly on the porch, but water was getting all over the porch. And there was some little trays out there that got two inches of water in them. So, for about two weeks, I couldn't get this computer running. Uh, it was wet somewhere inside. So I started, it would turn on with no video. So I started up here, and I dried everything off the best I could, took it stuff, hair dryer, everything. And finally, I started all these wires, and it was this wire that had a little bit of water still in it, this big 24-pin connector right here. Uh, once I got everything dried out, got the RAM back in, this Team Force RAM, Team Group, Team Nighthawk, 3200 cell 14 RAM. Uh, one of the sticks wouldn't work, so I RMA'd it. Did not say anything about any water. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got a brand new set. There's the, see if it'll focus on that. So this is on eBay right now for 100 bucks, never opened. Uh, I think it's selling for 135 at Newegg. It's fast RAM. Well, in the meantime, I bought 32 gigs of RAM. Come on, autofocus for me. This right here. So, the first part of this video is going to be putting this in. Uh, this new RAM right here. That's the RAM I bought. 32 gigs as a replacement until this. It just came back yesterday, this other RAM. So, I'm going to put this in anyway and just sell this other one on eBay and double my amount of RAM. This is 3616 CL16. This is 32 CL14, which almost exactly the same speed. And I've never got around to putting in these ARGB fans, so I'm going to put them in the front of the case. And I'll fast forward through most of that and show you after it's done. Thanks. Just stay watching, subscribe, and do all that while you're while I'm fast forwarding through. Oh, wait. I have a Harley. Why am I fing on a 3700X streamer? But I have a Harley. <laughs> I have a Harley. Why would I be working on a computer on Saturday morning? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I have a Harley. Okay. All right, guys. Just finished with putting the fans in. Fast forwarded through all that. And the two RAM sticks. And, um,. The RAM's 3600CL16, it caused me to take out the battery and reset the CMOS, but once I did that, it started up once, then I re rebooted, um, played in the BIOS a little bit, rebooted, so just reset the XMP, pro or DOCP on AMD profile. Uh, so you can see I'm using OBS and starting with the overlays right now, and I got a green screen behind me. And I found a link for 52 overlays, and they're commercial, I believe, but the link's gonna be in the description as long as they stay up. And we'll cover very briefly, and my head will kind of turn to the side. Uh, whenever I look at the other screen, I'll just bring over OBS onto this main screen. 
Also, we're going to look at which NVENC cards are the good ones for streaming. Uh, the support matrix covers that. We'll be looking at that in a second. Uh, I want, let's cover some of these OBS options first. So let me turn off this display capture. Alright. Um, this is Streamlabs OBS. And let's just import one. So you do it through the main settings down here at the very bottom left. And there's a little trick to this I want to show you to make it a little bit easier. Sync, go to Scene Collections, Import Overlay File. You don't actually import anything that's been unzipped. You have to import the zip file to get um, all the scenes imported correctly. So you do star dot star asterisk dot asterisk instead of these overlay files. That's the way it's working on my machine. I assume it works like that on everybody's. So then it shows me all the zip files. Let's just find another one. Um, Let's import this one. I've never imported, or maybe Red Dead. Oh, that's a popular new one. So, all right. So there's my new overlay, and it's really pretty simple to um, add a source. So let's just click somewhere on here. And plus. Uh, let's do a video capture device, add source, and it's pulling up my camera. Now you can see the green screen behind me. Hopefully it doesn't mess up the video. If it does, I'll just stop and start. So you can see it imported that whole, just by loading the zip file. So I'm going to switch back to the one I was on. And there I am with the green screen filtered. Uh, basically, it's on this uh, this webcam right here. I believe it's this one. Um, no, main webcam. Then I, if I right click and go to filters, I'll see my chroma key green. And I had to bump up the similarity to get different shades of green. So there I am. Let's get off of that. Let's see if I can minimize this a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. All right. Um, switch back to my notes here. So this link's going to be this one right here is going to be in the description to go and download those files. 52 overlays that you can just import and start from there. That'll make your life much easier. Let me switch. It comes with the sounds. I had to turn on the sounds for this video. Normally, you wouldn't be playing them in OBS. But you can see some of them. And they'll be repeating on the other side, on the Twitch. But here I had to turn on the sound. And I don't want, they don't want them repeating right here. So let's go find. Uh, Browser source. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. Back over to the other screen. Um, some things I wanted to go over quickly. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Follow if you want the bell, get notified. Uh, I like. <coughs> I'm actually using a webcam for the second shot um, for this one right here. This is my, an old uh, phone. This is a LG. Yeah, that's an LG phone with 1920, 13 megapixel phone. Which uh, anybody that can't afford a, ca a camera to start streaming, this is going to be linked in um, the description below. It tells you how to do it. You download Google uh, Android device. What is it called? So far, I forget. But developers, uh, whatever it is, Android developers, 
So you add one foul here without those two. Oops, days. let me go back. Sorry about that. Um, this ADB forwarder tells you how to hook up a cell phone to your USB port and then load it into OBS so everybody can start streaming the cell phones. And it's really pretty easy. Uh, two programs to install this ADB, Google ADB, Android Deve Developers Kit, and then Python. And basically, I just put them both in the same directory. And then here's the command to start it. And then when you come into OBS, uh, you would put in this link right here, whatever it says on your telephone screen. Um, to get your webcam in and then you have then you have this this is from a cell phone um, also I wanted to move it to the side a little bit that new RAM is in there let it settle down for a second new G skill 16 gigabyte modules times two uh, we're about to go over that right now so I'll move this back out of the way and put it right in front of the, this case so you can see. I'll try to get a shot of both. So there's the streaming machine. Uh, get some of the screen back in. All right. Um, <clears throat> The thing I want to point out for those that like to complain in the videos, uh, here's an enhancer. Down at the bottom will be the links to add it to your browsers. Uh, click on whichever one you got. Uh, fast forward through the parts you don't like uh, if you want to go to the next thing. And of course, all this is getting ready for Twitch. So if I refresh this, you can. Back to this enhancer. Uh, this allows you to fast forward, and there's a bunch of other controls um, for this, and they kind of update the documentation. Here's the one I used, it's actually in the browser. Keyboard shortcuts, fast forward, shift dot, or shift apostrophe or increase the speed, all kinds of stuff that you can do to speed up your videos and skip. So, goal is to yeah, be on I have Twitch. To they played a decent amount, and I think and, uh, Brian is one of those players that is really- So that's what we're getting uh, ready for. A lab monster in the sense that he Use likes to be aware phone, of all the options OBS, that he's gonna be coming across. Set it for 1920 by 1080. So I think he'll be a bit more prepared for Hoji's sway style. Streaming in 1K, not 4K, up to but this point. 1K. However, I mean, it's so powerful, and Hoji's pretty high so quality good, is what this is being recorded at right now. I think this can go either way for sure. And I know that, like, so I'm going to turn the sound back off on this. Um, brief, briefly, I'm going to cover the B550 motherboard options. As you all well know, they just got released a week ago or less. They're just coming into stock. Um, the ones you see on the screen right now, top three are some of the better boards. Um, higher priced ones, $100 higher. Then you start getting, where the line cuts across, where it start getting into lower priced. I'm gonna have all these linked in here. Um, by the time you guys see this in the video, uh, B550 and X570 motherboards that you can use the eight core processor 3700X, or if you got a 3600, it should suffice. I, it might, uh, drop a little bit of frames, maybe not, maybe it won't. That's the importance of that NVENC encoder. So we're gonna be covering all these. I got some charts and some web pages we're about to go through. All right, so this is from the original. Asus, this is what's in the case right now. And it's a great board, um, it's, it is tough. Here's the graphics card 
and this is the lowest model that supports the, the newer end bank uh, for encoding. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the RAM. I explained earlier that I had a problem with one of the sticks. I had RMA, but I had sent them both in. So in the meantime, I bought these 32 gigabyte sticks, um, 2 by 16, 3600, and it's almost exactly the same speed as the 3200 CL14. So perhaps maybe you guys want to look at that. Um, here's one of the new. Uh, 550 motherboards. It's going to be covered in our new review. It's the extreme version. Um, good board. Uh, so down in the links below, when I put in those fans, three fans, I didn't have to use it on this build. Uh, but to control all your fan speeds at the same time, they either have to be on the same cable or on one of these controllers. The the fan, if you have, uh, this set came with both extender cables up to four fans, PWM, which is the fan speed control, <coughs> and four ARGB. So they stay in sync and I set them with aura sync on this one. <coughs> but once you go past four fans, you have you need one of these to give it more power and there's also a link for the ARGB version. This is to control the fan speed, the other ones control the ARGB once you can go past four fans. Uh, this is the software IP webcam that I'm using to control my video from my cell phone and it's going straight in by USB and we already showed you this ADB forwarder Python that look at starts a Python program that will let you load it into OBS or Streamlabs OBS. Um, the last thing I think I want to show you is some of these motherboard parts here, right? I'm going to show you why you should consider an A550 and that will be my next video on my picks for B550 because we're going to go over some of the differences and why you need to pay attention to this right now. You know, of course, picking the best motherboard. Uh, minimize regret, regret later. All right, this one, only the first one, is a B550. And compared to the Tough Gaming X570 Plus from Asus, these are both Asus boards. So you can see the processor speed. I mean the memory speed is already jumping up a lot higher up to 4600 on this uh, B550 they had a year's worth of time to improve the memory speed since Ryzen uh, came out Ryzen 3 I guess Zen 2 so I'm running a 3700X chip in here Ryzen 3000 in a year um, a year ago, they were supported in 3600 on the same motherboard that I have in here, and that's why I have that. And you could go up to 38, uh, what is it, 66, without uh, it doubling the command rate for the memory and slowing it back down. This one has the B550s, most of them have a faster memory support. That's an excellent reason. They also have PCIe 4 on the first NVMe slot underneath the CPU, one where your OS will be on, most likely. Um, and some of the boards even have PCIe 4 on the, uh, uh, I have one or two slots. Um, let's go to the next screen. This is the B550 Master. It has three PCIe 4, I believe. And, and the top outside ones have our B550s and have higher rated memory speeds. Let's look at the Elite and the B5, X570 and the B550 version. You can see the gigabyte 
is doing a better job about keeping their memory speeds equal on the B550. I can tell you that just from looking at these specs right now. However, that doesn't mean they don't have another issue. Maybe with the VRM, we're about to get to that. Here's the MSI B550Ms compared to the X570s. <coughs> and MSI hasn't got the memory speeds updated yet. So if you're going to get uh, one of these MSIs, you probably want to get uh, Tomahawk, maybe. However, moving on, we're going to show you that here's the difference in the chipsets. To the CPU, uh, X570 and B550 both have four. However, from the interface, PCI interface to the chipset, B550 only has three. That would be your lower two NVMEs. Same PCI lanes. Now the USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is the fast, I believe that is 20 gigabytes a second. I think Gen 1 is. I think, oh geez, I'm trying to remember. Let's go ahead here. Yeah. 10G is 3.1. So. The Gen 2 X570 definitely has an advantage. Uh, more Gen 2 slot uh, USBs. So, this is the official chipset support, but it's really the motherboard vendors are going past that. So, you can kind of see the PCIe for the graph GPU graphics card right there, what they kind of support. And they're similar, a little bit different. And here's another one, B550 versus X570. Kind of the same stuff here. So, all right, now we're gonna give credit where credit's due. This is DeBrower. These are VRM temperature tests, uh, which are the power delivery right around the CPU. I personally, once it goes past 70 degrees Celsius, so these numbers are, I cut it off or I install water cooling. Now these bottom three boards looks like they're going to have an issue uh, with heat. Now this is uh, 3900X out of the box. Looks like next one's 3900 overclocked to 4.2, and you can see some of them boards hitting 130 C. That's ridiculous. Like I said, anything over seven. So this would limit me to uh, since he's overclocking anything over what I said 74. So I'll say 80 C with the overclock. So anything over ADC here, I'd consider needed water cooling, maybe. So that's your call right there. Um, you could even go up to 90 on these boards, but I would do 70, 80 rule. All right, this is one from Hardware Unboxed. I drew a red line at my cutoff point right there. So you can see which ones they reviewed. Uh, those top, what is it, six I would use, and the rest I would have problems using. Um, those ones, those three in the orange, yeah, I would use. They're going to be cheaper, like the M, uh, B550 mortar. I'd use that uh, if I had a budget constraint. But for 20 bucks more, I can get the Tomahawk. However, let's go to their next slide. This is with the prices added to it. So you can kind of get an idea where you're at it, where you're at. Alright. And uh yes. Yeah, alright. Here's a different one, and this one's from TechSpot. It's uh, Steve Walton of Hardware Unbox. Uh, I think this is one. Let me see. Is it? Yeah, tech spot. So you can see he's kind of rating them. 
now uh, I was trying to find come back here oh man I thought I saved it uh, the one with now even though the MSI B50 Tomahawk um, is cooler temperature right there it also uses the most power out of all these boards by I don't know 80 watts and I thought I had a slide saved here I guess I don't so I'd suggest you go watch this hardware unboxed video where they're talking about actual power usage it can handle it it just uses more electricity so it's like uh, 400 watt light bulbs instead of three old school ones and let's see this one doesn't have it okay this is overclocked right here so anything over 80 I would say you definitely need to water cool and, and here my 70 degree rule let's see um, what do we got here this is Tech Yes City so what, what do we got 3950X at 4400 megahertz or oh, the memory is 4400 megahertz so I would say those top five boards uh, or six boards yeah six boards the Taichi I like too as uh, Taichi that's the only one I like actually <clears throat> now here you're starting to see a different differentiate um, he's checking temperatures on the VRMs and it's starting to get hot now bottom one's ASRock um, so this is power consumption uh, here's the one I wanted to look at a while ago you can see the B55M mortar and Tomahawk which are both MSI boards use the most power by far um, having owned an X570 master I would probably either get a B550 Aorus master that has 4P It'll cost you around 280, but that's still $80 cheaper than the X570 board. But it has nearly all the features of the X570 Master. Probably the one I'd pick, um, or the Taiichi looks really nice. I'm gonna come back through here, and I like that. I would go for the extra $100 and get one of those top three boards, Taiichi E Strix or the Master right there. You want to spend around 180 Tomahawk, but it's going to be using probably the most power, as this slide shows. I'll be making another video more in depth on this. I just wanted to give you the update for right now on this stuff. So I'll have these links of these motherboards that are out, and uh, let's see, do I got the XT versions? In one week or so. Yeah, right here. This memory is up to 5200 megahertz on the B550s, which blows the X570s out of the water. Now all their BIOSes might get updated to support them. I, we don't know yet. All these boards haven't even hit the manufacturer. I mean, uh, vendors yet. So, but there's most of them are coming in stock this week, already in stock. So there's references. Um, yeah, please go back and check. Here's what's going to be in the description. Uh, I wanted to cover this one here. Right? This is the NVIDIA chart. You can see the one in the very last column. Everything highlighted in the last column in green, that's the newest encoder, the 1660, 1660 Supers. 1660 Ti's, 2060's, 2070's, and 2080's have the newer encoder which is definitely better than anything else going right now it eliminates you having to use the CPU on the AMD CPU uh, processors um, where it sends it through that 
and you know, and you get a 30% drop in CPU usage when you use this NVENC encoder. So you want one of these cards, like right here, uh, for starting. And that's why I used the 1660 Super in this build. Because uh, it has the newer encoder. And that encoder is the Turing encoder. Now the 1650, it uses the older NVENC chip. I don't know why it didn't get it. They got the Turing, it's just cheaper cut of the 1660, I guess. Uh, there are more quadros, which these are for business and Teslas, for servers and business. Um, this link's in the description, along with uh, the free stream up overlays, the second link there. Uh, the case that's used in the streamer, I have a video I made on that. Of course, there's my website, you can go get more reference information, it has links to my videos, my Twitters, please follow me on Twitter. And the utility fast forward through the parts you don't like. Uh, nobody paid me anything for any of these parts. I would pay for a thing myself, so it's not a biased opinion on anything I have. There's the links to the system, uh, the old RAM and the new RAM. And again, I had to RMA this, but the system was outside. So, um, I know. So that's the new system. And of course, here's your new B550 motherboards. I'm starting to put my picks. These are my picks so far. Um, if I was going down, I would probably get the F version of the Strix right here. Uh, I'd get this Tomahawk, except it uses 80 watts more power than other uh, power delivery on it. Something's going on there. And of course, the XTs. Be coming out on July 7th, the 3000 XT versions that get 100 or 200 megahertz bump in speed. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you later.